Hello, my name is Henriette and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'd love to have you here. I love working with jute twine and in this video I want to give you some ideas of what you can make with it. I particularly like jute twine because it's biodegradable. I often think that the projects you make using natural materials turn out the best. My first project is an alternative to a napkin ring. Tie four pieces of twine string together and then attach them with a piece of scotch tape or sellotape to your table. Arrange them so that you have two pieces of string in the middle and one to each the left and the right hand side. Then scotch tape or sellotape the two middle ones to the table as well. Now I can start braiding it. Now this is actually macrame or macrame. I'll show you how to do each part of the braid a couple of times so you can get the hang of it. But this particular type of macrame or braid is also used a lot for friendship bracelets. Macrame is the art of tying decorative knots. And historically, the origin of macrame goes back to the East, 2300 BC, to the Assyrian peoples and the Persians. They were the first to knot only for the purpose of decorating the edges of the mats with knots. And I love that this skill is still being used today. get to the end of your braid, I simply just tie a knot. I also like to trim the edges just to make it look neat and tidy. I'm just going to tie one knot loosely around my napkin. I always like to add something I've made to our table settings. It just shows that you care about the people you have invited. Project number two entails a bit of crocheting. So I'm going to crochet a plain basket, which I'm then going to decorate. I've been crocheting since I was a child, and it's something I learnt during the long winter nights in Denmark. I'm going to give this basket a fringe all the way around the edge. So I'm cutting off loads of lengths of twine to make this happen. This does require a bit of patience, but I think it's worth it. I find it the easiest to use my crochet needle to attach the bits of twine. I pull it through from the inside of my basket and put the two ends through the loop. Make sure you pull it taut. This part also requires a bit of patience. I think it'll look much nicer if I unwind the twine. Now I've used three ply twine, which means that there are three bits of twine in each string. I think the pieces of twine are a bit on the long side, so I'm going to give it a quick haircut. I intend to use this basket as a bread basket, and I think it will look nice on any table. To show you just how versatile it is when you crochet twine and I want to show you some of the baskets I've been making over the years. I use them for different things, storage of various things in the bathroom or in our bedroom and also to display some of our plants.
Project number three is all about upcycling and I'm going to use some empty wine bottles for this one. Make sure you use bottles that has an indent in the base, also known as a punt. Begin by tying a piece of twine around the neck of the bottle and then remove it. Next, cut six pieces of twine about six times the height of the bottle you're using. Fold each of these pieces in half and then attach them to the circle you made first of all. Put them through the middle and loop them through, like this. Ensure you space them out equally and you should end up with something like this. Place your little circle back onto the bottleneck. And now it's time to get nutting. So I'm going to use a square knot because I think it looks quite nice. But I'll also show you a different knot a bit later on. Using two pieces of string from different loops, the loops that you did before, tie them in a square knot. Then you need to repeat with the next two pieces of string but make sure that the loop is about the same as the first one you created. Continue all the way around the bottle until you've done them all. The second round, you basically do the same, but ensure that you use pieces of string coming from two different knots like so. Continue going round and round until you get to the bottom of the bottle. Then gather all the pieces of string, pull them taut, and then tie a knot right at the bottom of the bottle. Give the strings a quick cut to make them even. Finally, I'm gonna use my glue gun to force the thread into the punt or the indent at the bottom of the bottle. Here comes the second way you can tie the knots. Literally just gather the two strings together and tie a knot like so. This will make the bottle look slightly different, but I kind of like them both. I have decided to use my bottles as candle holders. And here I am fitting the candles. I needed to cut them a little bit to make them fit. And here they are, all finished. I think they make for a very nice addition to any table. I quickly wanted to show you some vases I made, again using twine. If you want to see more about those, I'll link the video below in the description box. My idea number four is all about gift wrapping. Now I don't know about you, but I'm finding that ribbons are so expensive these days and I think twine can be just as effective. The brown paper I've wrapped my present in is from Ikea and it's really cheap. I'm just tying a knot at the back of the present here before I add a little something special to the front. I've been in my garden and I've cut a little bit of Euronymous. They are of hedge plants and I'm just going to stick it underneath the twine. And I think that's all you need to make it look very special. For my next present, I'm going to use the twine like you've seen done a million times before. But I'm gonna go around twice before I tie a knot at the back of the present. I love finding presents for people or making them myself. And I equally love wrapping them up and making them look pretty.
This time I'm going to use rosemary from my garden. It is free and I like the fact that you can wrap presents without spending an absolute fortune. I mean, after all, the paper is going to be ripped off and put in the bin. Here comes another little present idea. I thought it might be fun adding a few wooden beads to this next one. Now here I'm tying a knot on each side of the bead just to hold it in place. I'm going to use some more rosemary to finish this one off. I wanted to plait or braid some more twine for this next one. I thought it might look quite pretty with not just a string. I'm going to tie it around the present lengthways and I'm doing the knot on the front this time because the plait or the braid is so pretty. Add a bit of Euronymous and the job is done. For my last present, I'm going to add a bit of thick burlap ribbon. I'm not going to use very much as I'm only going around the middle of the present. I'm going to fix it with a bit of tape or scotch tape. Then I'm going to go around with some twine, just randomly. This time I'm going to tie a bow on the front of the present. To be honest, I really like the natural look of these type of gifts, but you could of course use more colourful paper or colourful twine if you wanted to jazz it up a bit. My fifth idea using twine requires a bit of knitting and if you think my knitting looks a little bit odd then it's because I've been taught the Scandinavian way. This is how we hold the knitting needles. Whether you hold your knitting needles this way or the one where you hold one under the arm, the outcome is exactly the same. After I've knitted a little square, I crochet the sides together like so. I think it makes it look so neat when you crochet instead of stitching. I also crochet along the top on one side, effectively making like a little bag. Once this is done, I sew up all the loose ends and turn it inside out. I'm actually making a back scrubber just to get rid of any dry skin I might have accumulated over the winter months. Now you're going to need a wooden spoon and a kitchen scourer. I'm going to put them together and put them into the sock we've just created or bag if you like. Then I'm going to loosely stitch around the edge to create a tie and once I've done that I'm going to pull it taut and finish it with a little bow. To make it extra special I'm just going to put a little bit of leather tie through the hole of the spoon. Here it is, all finished, and I think it's going to look nice in our bathroom. My last twine idea is also to do with bathrooms. I've always wanted a scrubber that I can just hold in my hand and do my legs and things like that. So I decided to make my own. Now these sponges are little baby sponges that I got from our supermarket. They were very cheap. So I'm going to crochet a bit like when I do a basket. I'm going to start off by making a circle and then I'm going to go up the sides exactly like a basket, but make it so it fits the sponge perfectly. 
I then made another circle, which I'm going to use as a lid. And I'm going to crochet the lid onto the main body. This stage is a little bit fiddly, but I'll always recommend crocheting things together because it's such a nice finish. I decided to add a handle to put my hand under to make it easier to use. Here it is, all finished. You'll have to let me know which one was your favourite project. As always, I'm going to finish with something edible. And today I'm going to make a trifle. Trifle is an old English dessert and it first appeared in cookery books in the 16th century. The earliest use of the name trifle was in a recipe for a thick cream flavor with sugar, ginger and rose water. Now this was in a book written by Thomas Dawson in 1585. The use of jelly in a trifle didn't come around until 1760, but be a little careful with what you put into your jelly. Don't use things like pineapple and kiwi fruit because it won't set. Make sure that you allow about four hours for the jelly to set in the fridge. Traditionally, a trifle would contain alcohol, such as brandy or sherry, but I'm not going to put any in my trifle today because children are going to be eating it. Once your jelly has set, it's time to add cake. Now I'm going to use Swiss roll today, but you can use any other sponge cake or perhaps even biscuits. As always, I will of course leave the recipe below in the description box. Whilst I'm whipping up some cream, I want to thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe, like and comment. I love hearing from you. I like placing Swiss roll around the edges of my trifle bowl and then I'm going to pour some custard into the middle and add more fruit. I like using raspberries, blueberries and strawberries in my trifles because I think the colours are so pretty. The last layer of the trifle is whipped cream mixed with some icing sugar. Then I decorate it with more fruit and some chocolate and of course a little bit of mint from the garden. I hope you all have a fabulous week. I'm going to leave you with some videos of the finished trifle. So yummy. That's all from me today. Much love from London.